no it does there there we go it's wait i think now. i think it's working so. okay girl um thank you so much for doing this for me oh, of course you I'm have so excited oh you you're so great yeah. so <laughs> you have such an amazing story of finding safe calm love uh after healing your inner child and just so open about you know healing wounds from childhood and I'm just really in admiration of your your vulnerability as a practitioner online. I think that's really important. And so my first question for you, did you always mm-hmm. know that helping people this way would become such a big part of your story? Or when you first started your practice, did you have kind of other plans of what your practice might look like? Well, thank you for that, Raina. Um, that means a lot <laughs> coming from you, especially. I've had some people ask me that before, and um, I think when I was at the beginning, I didn't know that my love story would become such a core part of this. Um, My entire mission is really just to get the work of inner child healing out there. But I realized that when people start experiencing intimate relationship problems is when they start taking their healing more seriously right? Because this intimate relationships, it it's such a sensitive topic. It, it so closely resembles our parental child relationship from childhood that that tends to be where a lot of our past issues will resurface later mm-hmm. in life. Mm-hmm. And um, I realized that it was the same thing for me. It was actually my own relationships that inspired me to or motivate me to look towards healing. Mm, so, yeah. Amazing. Well, I, I so deeply appreciate your program. And for me, I, I found so much healing in your program because, you know, I had had this experience through my twenties of how come I'm really unhappy when I'm in relationships. And then when I'm single, I'm happier but I want to be in a relationship again. And I just kept like (laughs) going through this cycle over and over again. And and then just having to be like, okay, there's something else going on here because I know that I deserve a normal, healthy relationship. But then when I'm in one, I just like Mm. blow it up. Mm. And I'm like, I know that I know that it's not, I can't, I'm like, it's almost like I can't be that damaged. (laughs) I got to figure this out. (laughs) And, and I had also had this like really like uncomfortable body feeling. Mm. And so that was part of your, um, you know, part of your marketing of the program was like, do you have this like tightness in your body or in your, I think, I think it even said like specific to your gut, do you have this tightness that's like always, always there? And I'm like, Mm. that's been a problem for me that I don't know how to address. And I had a couple friends sort of drop in my consciousness. Hey, what about, you know, child stuff? Like, have you ever like really looked at that? And, and then I found your program and it just like, it totally changed my life. So I'm really, really grateful to you for the work that you do. And that's why I wanted to bring you on because like I wept while I was doing your program because I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this work that I've been avoiding for so long that I didn't know was work Mm -hmm. that I could be doing right if I had known I would have probably done it sooner um so maybe just you know uh, your professional experience maybe just talk a little bit more about like inner child healing what does that what does that mean for someone that's never even heard of that before maybe yeah well thank you for that Raina and I I also just want to say uh it makes my heart leap with joy when I see other healers practicing what they preach and doing their own work. And it it just speaks to your power and your medicine. And I I totally believe in the work that you do. I stalk your post. Did you know that? (laughs) I love the carousels that that you make. (laughs) Yeah. And I I would absolutely trust anybody in in your hands. Um, You're a very incredible person yourself. Um, So I just wanted to say that. (laughs) Yeah. But um, yeah, inner child healing is it's kind of a, an odd term, right? Because obviously it's not a literal child inside us, but it's it's a metaphor. And it represents 
the part of ourselves that was lost from younger years when certain things happened, uh, which may have traumatized us or when certain needs haven't gotten met. So the actual idea of it comes all the way back from like Jungian uh, psychology, where Carl Jung believed that when certain traumas happened in life, there's a part of our consciousness that gets stuck at that age. So for example, if let's say your father walked out of your life at age seven, that there's still that a little piece of you that's still seven years old, mm -hmm. that's still waiting for daddy to come home. Mm -hmm. And that wound doesn't just resolve on its own unless we go back in time and process the memory of what happened, right? And usually how it resurfaces later on in life is having similar types of relationships with with other men, for example, um, that's a very simplistic example, but that's what inner child healing is all about. It's almost like going backwards, going or time traveling to the past and fulfilling the needs or processing unresolved issues all the way back from when we were you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old so that we can move on from that in the future. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And, you know, when I think about when people have these, you know, really terrible, like breakdown experiences, like I've seen many adults turn into a child in front of your eyes. And so it's, yeah. those are the moments when you're like, what, what's happening right now? Like what part of them is not an adult man or woman anymore? They are right. like very literally that yeah. child in front of your eyes. And it's kind of overwhelming. Right. Is there a different term for it? other than inner child healing? Mm. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I would, I'll even say that there are very few problems in life that are purely adult problems. <laughs> I would say maybe more than 90% are actually childhood things being played out still, yeah, right, in adulthood. Yeah. Um, but I think what you're, what, so what you've given is a perfect example of age regression basically right when yeah. someone I mean even politicians I mean if you ever watch them you know really go at it you feel like you're watching a couple of toddlers just you know fighting yeah. again on stage right or yeah. you know something of of the like um so yeah that's literally what happens emotionally yeah wild mm -hmm. have you ever had anyone um like really resist doing this kind of work or are people when they come to you, they're just like, I will do anything. I'm ready to fix this. Like, do you come up with a lot of resistance? Mm, great question. I remember when you and I, we had a brief conversation about the spiritual community mm -hmm. and, and how in the spiritual community, there is a lot about everything coming from, your own inner work right and even if you're in a toxic environment like that's just a projection mm -hmm. of yourself and one of the things that you and I had talked about is that sometimes it is also the environment and um, that's just one example right of how sometimes the conditioning that we come in with although it can be well-meaning uh, it can prevent people from taking a look at this from a different perspective and I know that inner child work sometimes is, is a little bit weird right in some of the activities that we do and um, yeah, if you're they coming can be in, really yeah. uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it's a little bit odd but I mean I've always been a, a weird person so that's not <laughs> surprising yeah but definitely people who have been spent a lot of time or who have been really invested in uh, other systems, whether it's religious systems or, um, you know, other types of healing modalities, they can find inner child healing extremely vulnerable, mm. right? Extremely vulnerable. I mean, think like, you know, even the things that we grow up saying to each other, like stop digging up the past, right? Or the past mm -hmm. is the past. There is a lot of resistance towards going back to the past 
Because I think most people think that it's going backwards, mm -hmm. right? That we should be moving forward in order to heal. But inner child healing is paradoxical. It's saying that actually we have to go backwards first before we can move forward. So I think that part of it can be hard to understand. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. And was it really early in your practice that you noticed that people really needed inner child healing? Or was it later that you saw it? Mm, good question. For me, I stumbled upon it for myself pretty accidentally. And before I really got into it, uh, I was using the modalities that they would teach me in therapy school, right? So the CBT, mm -hmm. um, like emotions focus work. And there is a time and place for all of these different modalities. I think, you know, I definitely draw from bits and pieces of all of those, but I just felt that it wasn't getting to the core of the issue. Yeah. Now, I've always been a really deep person like I I I just my it's just how my personality is I want to get to the root cause of what it is and inner child work it just aligns so perfectly with my own beliefs around that mm -hmm. um, so it was actually probably halfway through my career that I started introducing this to my therapy clients and seeing that oh my gosh this stuff really works we would go in circles for maybe seven to eight weeks with just, you know, CBT, very, you know, cut and dry. Mm -hmm. And then we would do a couple of sessions of that deeper inner child work. And they would start having these almost unrelated epiphanies in their life that we, we had never made that much progress before in such a mm -hmm. short period of time. Right. And then suddenly they were having insights and things were coming together that were unrelated to what we were talking about. So we would start with work stress and then it would go back to, whoa, my mom was a workaholic. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and then all these memories and connections would start coming out. And then I was a believer at that point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this stuff really works. Yeah. yeah. When you see it in, in, real time for your for your patients for sure mm -hmm. that's amazing so it's you know not a quick fix but faster than your typical yeah. top therapies yeah yeah and you know as a practitioner that's what you really want like you know there's it's like you don't want to rush people through things you don't want to necessarily um you know um bring in quick fixes and there's a million different forms of that but you also want people to to get results for yes, to get rewarded exactly. for the efforts and time they're putting in right that's what we really want for people yeah that's really interesting so i th i know you've talked a little bit more i have a couple of questions i want to ask you but i just want to yeah. bring this one in too because i know you've talked a little bit more about um some of the the spiritual um experiences that that you've had or or um want to bring in so are you um, is that more of just like a personal journey for you? Or do you have clients that you work on that with where inner child healing is just a portion of your practice? Oh, I like these juicy questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I really appreciate that. I, people don't usually ask me about that part of my work. Um, so yeah, that, that feels good. <laughs> well, you know, it's, I actually said this on my recent episode that my kind of my main intention ultimately is about spiritual growth. And I'm a very holistic person, as are you, Raina. And to me, trauma healing is part of spiritual awakening, mm -hmm. right? That's that's what it's all about. Spirituality is coming, I mean, in the most simplistic way you could say it is coming into oneness right with with the divine with with god with the universe 
And trauma is the separation of self, right? And so it only makes sense to me that putting ourselves back together and integrating, that is, it's the same thing as the path to spirituality. And um, I've only recently been making those connections on my episodes because I think when people are really suffering, like they're really in the depths of trauma, it's really hard to talk about things on such a grand scale. So, mm-hmm. so you have to meet people where they're at. Right. Yeah. Um, and now that I feel like I have enough of my work out there, I can start bringing in these, these greater concepts because I, I do believe that we are going through um, an awakening and we, we we're always going through some sort of awakening right mm-hmm. in the process of human evolution i forget what the original question was so do i <laughs> this is amazing oh my yeah. goodness um oh just about your work and if you if you take people you know for for therapy or spiritual issues or if inner or like as if oh inner child yes is, yes, yeah, yes only a part oh yes of course yeah mm-hmm. yeah i do and and you do find that they tend to be related mm-hmm. and um a lot of people who might have been atheists or, you know, very strict atheists or agnostics before, I have noticed that when they start doing the deeper trauma work, that they start unlocking intuitive abilities where they start opening their minds to something greater than just the physical. Mm. And it's really interesting, right? Because again, it's the same thing. They're, they're coming more into wholeness with themselves and therefore they're strengthening their connection to something more so it's i I don't even have to say it people yeah, discover yeah. It for themselves right when when they do that work yeah wow I, I think uh one of the things that i've been exploring and a little bit in my podcast but i'm writing a book right now and so i'm trying to explore it in that because i'm in uh, I'm in the chapter about psychedelic medicine. It's a book about 60s counterculture and food and holistic yeah. culture. And so one of the things I'm exploring in this chapter now is how many people come to spiritual communities seeking spiritual awareness from a place of trauma. And mm-hmm. so a lot of times you can treat the uh, your spiritual explorations as just another form of escapism. And so mm-hmm. what you're talking about when it's like, you know, doing this body trauma healing is part of unlocking spirituality. I'm like, yes, I have, I've absolutely seen that. And, um, but we have these, you know, layers of, of protection. And so I love the word unlocking because that you, it's like a visual, you can mm-hmm. see people like <laughs> literally opening up and shedding a layer and being like, okay, now I have the capacity to think about bigger, bigger things like my purpose or God, spirit universe. Like, it's like, you don't, necessarily have the capacity to even consider holding those concepts when you're under so much trauma and when you carry all that baggage yeah that's that's such we could have a whole you know know. two-hour conversation (laughs) on spiritual um bypassing right Or, or spiritual ego you know it's funny you mentioned that it's part of the reason why I kind of distanced myself a little bit from uh, the spiritual community that I knew in Toronto, mm-hmm. because you're absolutely right. If you're not careful, that trauma can very sneakily transform into a different version of being expressed, right? Yeah. And, um, I actually read an article last night about how psychedelics can actually sometimes enhance a person's narcissism if they're not careful right as opposed to you know giving them that ego death and oh gloria (laughs) yeah i'm sure you have a lot to say on this topic but (laughs) yeah that you're right it's a whole other podcast for sure which we could totally do yeah Um, down um, for it another day but i i really wanted to talk about inner child healing because it was so potent for me Maybe, mm. maybe tell me just a little bit of some of the symptoms that someone might ex symptoms, experiences, feelings, thoughts that someone might have that, um, that inner child healing can support them with. That's a great question. Yeah. The number one thing that comes to mind, I hear this all the time is 
you feel like you're having the same problem mm. in different packages, mm. right? So, and you know, I, I th those words actually came from my own experience, and from me saying them out loud, I realized that um, a lot of the people I work with, they were having the exact same experience. You feel like if you're a people pleaser, for example, you realize that it's happening at work, you're not getting heard, you're not getting promoted. And it's also happening in your friendship groups, people are taking advantage of you. And it's also happening in your romantic relationships, right, you're bending over backwards, trying to um, get someone to stay. And it comes to the point where you feel like this, this pattern just keeps happening. Yeah. Right. And that's usually an indicator that there's some old software that's running in your life that's coming from something that happened to you a long time ago. Mm -hmm. That would usually be the main indicator. Um, but another thing is, especially if it's childhood trauma, you feel very sensitive or sometimes you may even start crying when you see happy families on TV mm -hmm. or certain things that remind you of your family, right? You have resistance towards seeing those things or you have what seems like an overreaction, right? Okay. To seeing a happy or sad family um, and would make you wonder, why is this stirring such a deep well of emotions inside me? Mm. Those are some, those are some pretty big signs that there's something that hasn't quite been expressed or explored yet. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And I, and, and, uh, you know, it's just, I'm thinking about how that's such a feeling unhappy, even if you're in a, an ideal looking situation could you could just miss you could just interpret that as um you know this is just the human condition that 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 we want more but i i think it i think there's also that that difference where it's like deep inside you know it's not it's not just that it's that it's like a deep there's something else going on here not just that sort of surface level oh you know and as what i'm saying making sense I think there's a little bit of a a little bit of a difference there and that's why it can be really confusing yeah because it's it is also true that um there are a lot of issues in our adult lives too right you know taxes and wars and <laughs> I mean that is true yes so I can see why it can be confusing to figure out where those feelings are coming from yeah yeah so you are um you are helping people to you know unlock these sort of deep deep uh deep seated issues within them and help them to really deepen their awareness of their uh patterns and choices and behaviors in life um what is one of the ways that you would recommend that someone learn to comfort their inner child this question because that's such a key part of it is befriending that part of yourself mm -hmm. the first step is all about making that connection because even us saying to someone right comforting your inner child if you haven't done this work before, you may you, you may have absolute, you know, you, you're totally estranged from that mm -hmm. part of you. Um, and I like to describe it as seeing an old friend for the first time in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and so that first step is really important because it's almost like first impressions, right? You you're there to rebuild that trust again. Mm -hmm. And as strange as it sounds, your inner child may not trust you right now because there's been so much separation for, yeah. you know, it could be 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And so what I recommend people doing is when they're, uh, you know, to visualize 
speaking to a younger version of yourself, but to almost like you're getting down on one knee at eye level. Right? And this is how you deal with actual children, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to loom and tower over them, but you want to get down on their level eye to eye and just let them know that you are sorry for forgetting about them, but you're here now and you're going to do whatever it takes to build that trust again and let them know that you are here from them now. And eight times out of 10, that's all your inner child needs to hear. Children are very forgiving, very forgiving. Yeah. And you just start that relationship right there and then. That's so beautiful, Gloria. And, you know, I really related with the, the estrangement part of what you just said, because when I first had that experience in your program of meeting her, um, there was definitely like such a foreignness of me and her, but it was also like, I'm so sorry that I've given all this energy to ignoring you. And that was, that was really eye opening and, and painful. So you also have to forgive yourself for forgiving energy to the opposite of what you could have been doing, but you just didn't know. You don't know until you know, yeah, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Thank you for sharing that. This and, is... you know, just to, yeah, just to validate, um, like when I started this work, I couldn't even look at a photo of myself without bawling my eyes out, yeah. right? It's so tender. Um, but of course, that's why it's, it's called work because it mm -hmm. is, it can be hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful though. And thank you so much for doing it because you have to hold people at their most tender. And I know that that's, that takes, that takes energy. So you have to really take care of yourself too. Um, the last thing I just want to, to mention, um, and maybe you can just comment on is this idea that freedom and safety and protection have to be created from the inside out that we can't we can't just find that externally all the time we have to learn how to do that for ourselves but what's your thoughts on that yeah it's gang approach right but of course the external is important but there is also the sovereign aspect of healing as well there are going to be times where we don't have control over the environment. And that's why it's so important to balance the outside with the work that you're doing on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, and you're absolutely right. That's a huge part of the work is learning to create a home within yourself, right? That, that again, that deeper well of resources that you can create within whether it's mm -hmm. a place that you can land emotionally within yourself whether it's being able to comfort yourself when things are difficult um, is so 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 important mm -hmm. makes your life feel better <laughs> that's for sure yeah my life has been incredible since <laughs> I finished your program so it's really special oh. for me to be able to thank you in person for that and and I'm so grateful for you to come in on to making time to come on Ray's radio and chat with me about such yeah. deep stuff. Maybe you want to tell people um, how they can reach, uh, reach more of you and talk about your amazing podcast. Cause I know you've reached so many people through your incredible podcast. That's how I found you. Oh, thank you, Rena. Well, first of all, everyone, please subscribe to Ray's radio. <laughs> I can't wait for the next episodes to come out. I'll be waiting to, check these out <laughs> um, but yes I think the um, best place for people to find my work is just finding the inner child podcast that's literally what it's called mm -hmm. <laughs> the inner child podcast uh, it's on Spotify and Apple and most recently we have uh, started releasing animated versions of the episodes on YouTube so I'm wow. really excited about that <laughs> That's really fun. And I know you're into anime. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. <laughs> that makes your inner child happy too. <laughs> yes, it, it really does. Oh, that's really great. That's well, thank fun. you so much, Gloria. I hope you have a great day. You too, Reina. This was a lot of fun. Thanks for being here.